Whoa, don't get stuck with a bad apple. Here are five tips for picking the best ones. One, check the weight. If it feels heavy, it means it's juicy. Two, check for firmness. Give it a light squeeze. You shouldn't feel any soft spots or it's going to start to soften and rot a lot faster. Three, check the appearance. It's normal for mother nature to add some little scuffs or marks, but if you see any bruising like this or any indentations and cuts, you definitely want to avoid those. Otherwise, the ethylene gas is going to produce and they're going to get really soft and run very quickly. Four, give it a smell. Each variety has their own characteristic odor. So if it doesn't smell fragrant or sweet and it smells more green, you're going to ripen it a little bit longer. Just place it in a basket and ripen it on the counter. Five, check the color. This will depend on the variety. For red apples like Red Delicious, you want an even deep red tone. That means it's been on the tree longer and exposed to more sunlight, giving you a sweeter taste and better flavor. Honeycrisp should have a slightly bluish green tinge on top and around the sides. If it starts to get too yellow, that means it's getting close to being overripe. For Fuji apples, ones with a yellow tinge will be sweeter compared to the ones that are a little bit more green. For tart green apples, you want an even tone throughout. If you have any extra tips that I didn't cover, let me know in the comments below. With so many types of different apples at the store, how do you know which one is the sweetest one? I guess this one looks pretty good. Thanks. Hey! You'll be surprised to find that sweetness is not just determined by the apple's color. It's a mix of the sugar content, the amount of malic acid, and the amount of volatile aromas that creates a sweetness perception. Let's compare some of the most common varieties found at the market. Fuji apples are the sweetest and have the lowest acidity, followed by Envy apples that are sweet and crisp, and Gala that are sweet and mild. Golden Delicious has a mild and balanced taste, followed by Red Delicious. Now we get into more tangy. Honeycrisp are sweet, tart, and fragrant. Pink Ladies are more tangy than sweet. And as you know, the infamous Granny Smith is very acidic and tart, making your mouth pucker, but are perfect for pies. How sweet do you like your apples? Leave a comment below. Apples are an ethylene producing fruit, which means it's going to continue to ripen at room temperature and get softer and sweeter in taste. You could store it in a cool, dark place at room temperature for up to a week, two weeks at most. But if it's already ripe and you want to prolong the shelf life, head over to the fridge. Apples last longest at cool temperature, ideally between 30 to 32 degrees. This will slow down the production of ethylene gas and ripening. It's best to store apples in the crisper drawer. It has a little bit of a humidity, preventing wrinkling. They'll last about four to eight weeks in the refrigerator. Four mistakes to avoid when storing apples. Don't store apples near ethylene producing fruits like plums, tomatoes, avocados, and kiwis, or ethylene sensitive fruits like bananas and peaches. These emit a lot of ethylene gas, so they're gonna ripen these a little bit too fast. Store the apples away from ethylene sensitive vegetables like potatoes, greens, carrots, broccoli, peppers, and fresh herbs like cilantro and parsley. The gas is going to cause them to soften a lot faster. Apples are like flavor sponges. You're going to want to make sure to store them away from strong smelling foods like garlic or onion, especially if they've already been chopped up. Make sure to keep these ingredients in an airtight container and store them on separate shelves or bins in your refrigerator. It's perfectly fine to store the apples in the refrigerator in the bag that you got them in in the grocery store. Just make sure to not seal up. The gas will start to build up inside the bag, causing it to ripen and soften too fast. You want the gas to be able to dissipate. Don't forget to store away from ethylene sensitive fruits and vegetables. back to time. I got Grandma's famous recipe and everything, but you know what? She said we have to use a certain kind of apples. Let's head to the kitchen. Crisp, dense apples that take longer to bake down are really great for baking. If making something like a pie, a tart, or a crisp, it's best to use at least two types of apples to give you a variety of flavor and textures. Look for firm tart apples like Pink Lady or the classic Granny Smith. This is going to give a nice acidity and balance while hold its shape, but it's really not great to use in the entire recipe. 
add apples that are firm, sweet, and juicy. My favorite is Fuji. It's really sweet with a low acidity and it has a really nice floral taste. Otherwise, Honeycrisp is my other go-to. It's really crispy, refreshing, and nice and sweet. Or Golden Delicious, it has a nice balance between sweet and acidic. If you really want to just use one type of apple though, the best of both worlds is either going with Honeycrisp because it's got that moderate tartness and good sweetness, or Golden Delicious. And what apples should you avoid baking with? Skip the Red Delicious and Gala. They get a little bit too soft and don't hold their structure and doesn't really have a great apple-y flavor punch. They'd be better to use in something like an applesauce. And you can use any of your favorite varieties to make a healthy snack like apple chips. Mmm. Here are two easy ways to core an apple. Grab a melon baller, scoop out the core. You can also use it to remove the stems. Done. If you don't have a melon baller, grab a half teaspoon measuring spoon and do the same scooping motion. The second method is even faster. Just grab your chef's knife, cut along about a half inch on the side of the stem, rotate, cut off the other side, then cut off the remaining pieces. Done. Leave a comment about what method you prefer. Let me show you the easiest way to cut an apple. And now you're gonna take your knife and cut it along the stem. Then you turn it around and cut the other side. Good job. Now turn it around again to cut the other pieces. Now to slice up the apple, you're going to want to place it cut side down on the board. Yep, just like that. Now if you want to dice up the apple, just stack them on top of each other. Now cut straight down. Mm-hmm. Right. And now make some dices. Don't forget to protect those fingers. Yikes, this recipe for apple pie says I need three pounds of apples. I don't have a scale. Like, how many apples do I actually need? Oh, that's easy. One pound of apples is about two large, three medium, or four small, or about three cups sliced. Okay, so for three pounds of fruit, I need about six large apples and nine cups. Thanks, Jess. When apples are cut and the cells are damaged, they start to brown due to an enzymatic browning process. Don't worry, there are easy ways to slow down oxidation. If you plan to use the apples the same day and you're cutting a big batch for a recipe, just cover it with some cold water. This is going to create a protective barrier to prevent oxidation. I like to put a piece of paper towel on top to keep it submerged. Adding in some acidic lemon juice to water changes the pH of the environment, making it harder for the enzymes to brown the apples. Add one teaspoon per one cup of water and let it sit for five minutes, then drain and rinse. For a sweeter solution, add honey. Add one tablespoon per one cup of water. Stir to dissolve. The honey contains a peptide that actually inactivates that enzyme that causes the browning. Add the apples and let them submerge for at least five minutes, then drain and rinse. This will stay good for at least eight hours, and if you refrigerate it and cover it really well, even up to two days, which is great for meal prep. For a super economical solution, grab some salt. You're gonna want a half a teaspoon. Don't worry, it's not going to make the apples taste salty. Add it to one cup of room temperature water. Let the granules dissolve. Now add the apples and let it soak for five to 10 minutes. Then give it a good rinse and drain. This method will prevent color change for about 12 hours, so just make sure to pack it up tight. And it works really great if you're making a charcuterie board or packing some lunches for the next day.